by far the biggest lesson that I've learned in mentoring and coaching people who are learning to code and trying to become software developers is that the first software you really need to develop is the software that's running between your ears because you have a lot of thought patterns and beliefs and habits that you've built up that are actually counterproductive to learning to code. So in this video, what I wanted to reveal are the three red flags that I see when I'm talking to somebody and they're sort of explaining their story that stand out to me as being like real big problems that they need to fix. So I wanna help you avoid that. Let's just dive in. So the first red flag that I hear in a lot of conversations I have with people who are trying to learn to code is when they say to me, I wanna learn the right way, right? I wanna be as efficient as possible with my time. I don't wanna waste any time. This is great. I love that many of you guys wanna do this the right way. They wanna learn this perfectly. The problem is that this is going to set you up for a much more difficult time than it's going to be. Learning to code is very messy. I've said this many, many times on my channel, and no matter how many times I say it, I still hear this over and over again. So let's take a different field, for example. Say you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to start businesses, multiple businesses, right? A lot of people have this feeling that they could go to school and they could learn everything they need to know about business, they can get an MBA, let's say, and then they can just start opening up businesses, right? Maybe they had a friend who did that. They're like, oh, I'm gonna do it like that. I would encourage you to go out and meet some entrepreneurs, right? So, so maybe somebody who's running the local laundromat or whatever, right? And talk to them and see like, if they think that is the best approach. Most entrepreneurs I know would say it's complete BS, to be honest with you, to go to school to try to start a business. You will learn most of what you need to learn in a business, in the business setting, dealing with all the things that are gonna be coming at you. Business is really more about handling fires, setting up processes, dealing with employees, than it is about some proper structure and sort of some curriculum that you could learn. Could school help? Sure. But ultimately you have to dive into it and learn as you go. And this is a really good metaphor for programming. So if you think that there should be some curriculum that's gonna tell you exactly what you need to learn, the five steps to be a programmer, I love that. I love that sort of thinking. And there's definitely, uh, you can have, you can get guidance on this. You can have a roadmap and that's going to help you, but ultimately there's no perfect way. There's no you know, certification out there that's going to tell you when you're a software developer. Now, the next red flag that tells me that somebody's not serious about becoming a software developer is when they haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel. Like, what are you doing? Go take the half second, go down below, smash the subscribe button, hit that bell icon as well. So you know you're taking this seriously and you're getting great content from me. All right, in all seriousness, let's talk about red flag number two. So one of the most important pieces of information that I need to know if somebody is trying to learn to code to become a programmer, I need to know what projects are they building and what are they trying to build? So when I ask them point blank, like, what are you building next? And they say to me, and this is the big red flag, I've got some ideas in my head, that's very, very bad. It's very similar if you have a friend who has a great business idea, but they've been talking about it for years. So anytime you and your friends are together and they keep talking about this business idea and you look around, everyone's kind of just you know, rolling their eyes like, okay, yep, we know you got this big business idea. The same basic principle applies to you if you've got, just got some ideas bouncing around in your head. The reason is this, is because if you are, if you still haven't built a project or even if you have, you got some crazy ideas about what you wanna build next, if you just have them in your head, then you're getting the satisfaction of feeling like you are going to build them someday. But what's going to happen is you're likely to continue putting that off. And you're gonna keep learning theory, which is not gonna get you closer to your goal of being able to apply for a job because you have an incomplete portfolio. So don't do this. So if you have ideas in your head and you're like, oh, I've got all these ideas, the best thing you could do is very, very simple. Get out a piece of paper and write them down. Most importantly about this, okay? So don't just write them down, but commit to a date when you're gonna start working on it. Because again, if you just let this slide, it's just gonna keep, you're gonna keep kicking the can down the road, which is not going to be good. So the last red flag that stands out to me when I'm talking to somebody revolves around how they're actually going to get that first job offer from a company. If they say to me something along the lines of, I'm gonna apply to a few jobs, that's a massive red flag. So it's not good enough anymore to just apply to a few jobs on LinkedIn or Indeed or something like that. The barrier to entry for that is very low. Meaning anybody else can do that. It's very, very low effort. So everybody's gonna be doing that. What are you going to do beyond that? How are you going to make yourself stand out? What is your exact strategy to get hired? How are you going to prepare for the technical interviews? If I hear a little bit of that in their thought process, I'm like, okay, something good is going on here. But if all they're thinking is that they're just gonna to apply to as many jobs as possible, the likelihood that they are going to get a job is much lower. Now you should use Indeed, you should use LinkedIn. These are good tools. You should use the shotgun approach and apply to as many jobs as possible. But if you're serious about this, it goes much further beyond that. And you need to think about how to utilize LinkedIn, 
how to utilize a personal website, what that should look like, how to tailor and craft your resume so that it looks really good, how you can use some of your portfolio projects there, down to how to prepare for the technical interview. Now, I know some of you may be at month one of your journey where you're like, that's way ahead, Andy. I don't need to be thinking about that. Here's the thing. I would start spending some of your time, just 30 minutes to an hour a week, researching of what is the best way to land a job, how to job hunt properly, so that way when the time does come in six months or a year, you are prepared. So make sure that you aren't just gonna apply to a bunch of jobs, that you have a more coherent strategy than that. Now, if you are an aspiring self-taught programmer, you're learning this on your own, and you are interested in joining my mentorship program, I will leave a link in the description below of how you can do that. It involves an intake call where I'm going to be talking to you and asking you questions about your journey, making sure that it is a good fit. So definitely check that out below. Other than that, that's all I've got. Thank you so much as always for watching and peace out everybody.